I think my first model car I built around in fourth grade, it was like super simple. I sprayed it one color. You didn't even put no clear on it and just glue it. And I didn't even paint the plastic parts. Like the first uh, kit that I built was a 64 Impala AMT kit. So like the body was like a cream color. So I just literally slapped everything together and I was like super proud of it. My name is Jonathan Mercado and everyone knows me as Mercado. I, I started off as a, as a pinstriper. You know, just I think like anybody got my first, uh, my first brushes, my first can of one shot, started practicing and just kind of, this was like even way before workshops were even available. So this is around like YouTube age. So I was also buying books, reading up on it as much as I could, watching videos and just trying to figure it out on my own. At the beginning, it was just something for fun, you know, just like as a hobby, a pastime. As I started getting more interest in it, started to look up more info on it, I started finding out stripers that I like. I was always a, a big fan of Lifestyle Car Club. Started digging more into it and started figuring out who was painting these cars. You know, you got these guys like Mario Gomez uh, doing the paint jobs, you know, the Annie D, Walt Prey doing a lot of the striping. So a lot of my inspiration came from, from those guys. And you know, and even all that stuff traces back to Bill Carter, the drag boats, you know, all those paint jobs uh, originated from, from that era. And, you know, following, you know, some of the work that Armando Flores was doing, you know, seeing a lot of stuff in Lowrider magazine. So that's what kind of kept the, the fire burning and the, and the interest in model cars. And like I said, I followed his, his thread on Lay It Low. And I, I was like in love with all the replicas that he was doing of all the, the lifestyle cars. You know, and he was, you know, he, had, he was part of the Masterpieces of Model Car Club. And it's funny how things went full circle. Cause I remember when we first moved in, I seen this uh, very nice 67 Impala in the garage and, and it was super cool because like we moved in, I'm like, hey, we got a neighbor, I got a neighbor that's, that's got a lowrider, you know, and then I recognized the license plate, it says 619 Vida, and then that's when I started putting everything together. I was like, yeah, this guy knows I'm on the floors and then I'm on the floors is, 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 is a lifestyle car club. So that's when meeting those guys opened up the doors for me to be able to get to know a lot of other guys too. And then build a, was able to build a really good relationship with them, friendship, and like I said, they're still really good friends up to uh, this day. And in my town, like I said, there's a couple stripers, but the, the first striper I actually reached out to and started, you know, trying to kind of bugging was uh, Manuel Cisneros. So he's the one that, that in a way opened up the doors for me, mm -hmm. but started helping him out at the shop, but with never, like I said, the intentions of it being anything. Like I said, I just, I liked it so much and I just wanted to get a little more info on, on my own and then I could help him out. On, on, on his end too, you know, I was helping him clean the shop. That was my first insight, like the daily life of a striper, or custom painter. So I was just gravitated towards wanting to learn how to stripe and then eventually le uh, leading towards uh, custom paint. I went in it with with intentions, like I said, I, di I didn't want to become a custom painter. Like so I liked it, but it just always seemed, it was going back to like thinking that it was super difficult and it's like, it's a big responsibility. What if things go wrong? Like, it was just like a big weight, like, I was like, I'm not ready at all. But once I started seeing what, what tools and the materials you need, started slowly buying stuff and started doing like with skateboards. I feel like that's a common ground for everyone. We all start on skateboards or plexiglass pieces. So I started practicing on, on, all, on all that kind of stuff. And then little by little, like I started messing with it. But like I said, I still, I was just going off of what I kind of knew and, you know, hanging out. And around that time when I started messing with, with candy paint and all that, started hanging out at body shops already. So I was already, you know, kind of picking people's brains and, and at the same time, they wouldn't give me all the information. They're like, I just kind of picked out like, all right, this kind of seems like it's the way it's, it's done. Like in my early days, like I wouldn't prep it correctly. So that's why like the candy would kind of delaminate on me. I'd be scared to put tape on it. Like, I'm like, how do you guys do a whole paint job without having to put tape on it? And it was just like stuff that I had a bunch of unanswered questions. So I was just kind of going off of what I kind of knew. And just little by little, you know, eventually those skateboards kind of led to an opportunity to maybe do a roof. And little by little, um, like, so I was just doing it. I wasn't really promoting it yet. I wasn't really selling myself as like custom painter. Up until this point, I was doing mainly mobile work. Going to different shops. And I was starting to do like out of town stuff by then. One day I get a call out of the blue and it was Sam Manzano. And I was already following their page, you know, uh, Sam Manzano. Uh, Riviera Brothers, so they had this Riviera in there. Uh, it's pretty well known in San Diego. It was blue back in the day and Benny Flores and Sal worked on it, so it was super iconic. It's got a bunch of mods on it. So me being a Riviera lover, that car was one of my favorite cars growing up. And Sal was redoing the paint job, you know, the final version that it's currently right now. Uh, 
he Lamberson had originally striped it and Sal did patterns around it to mimic the old paint job that it was known for back in the day. So I get a call randomly and it's and it's Sal and he's like, hey, you know, this I just patterned out this car. Uh, I don't know if you know who I am. And right away I knew. And I said, so I've never met him up to the, up, up until this point. I just knew about him, seen his work all over the magazines, you know, knew that he had worked on, you know, Crystal Blue Persuasion. So he had a bunch of cars in his portfolio. And that was my first opportunity to start working with him. And I'm like, I gotta make a good impression. You know, I just striped that car up for him, added, you know, striped all the new patterns he had done. And then from then on, it just opened up the, the door for me to start striping uh, uh, Sal's paint jobs. He was like, hey, if you're gonna be right here, you need to learn how to paint as well. Like, so you got the striping done, down, uh, I recommend you start learning how to, uh, how to paint. So that's when he dragged me in there, started showing me his way of, you know, shooting metal flakes, shooting candies. So with my prior knowledge, I was able to just kind of junk a lot of the stuff that I knew prior hand. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna learn how, how, Sal, how Sal does it. And I was just able to soak it up really quick. And I just, uh, I was able to start, uh, you know, I've seen the, the improvement in the work compared to my earlier days. And then, like I said, little by little, we started doing a lot of collab work and it eventually led to, to me doing my own uh, big projects.